Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Antioch Southern Methodist Church. We are glad you are here. Uh, we are going to start off our service this morning uh, with a song. It says, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. Candace, the TV is not on back there. You guys can remain seated as we've seen this. We're going to go through it just one time. This is just a little opener for us this morning. I just figured it off. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ, his son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son, and now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Once again, welcome to church. We are glad you're here this morning. I uh, got a couple announcements we want to run through. Uh, we will not be having Wednesday night services this week uh, due to Thanksgiving. Hope you are planning to spend those times with your family. Our Christ Giving Sunday uh, is December 5th. Bring your favorite dishes and join us in the worship center. Uh, we're going to have a good old meal after church service that morning. There will be no Sunday school that day. Uh, the Gift for Christ uh, boxes are out, so you, if you have someone you would like to uh, um, nominate for that, you know, speak to someone from a member of the board, uh, and the gift for box, they're in both four years, there's a place where you can place your uh, gifts. The Conjol Christmas Parade will be Saturday, December 11th. Uh, I believe that, oh my gosh, I can't remember the relationship. Who, who's offering the trailer? Um uh, yeah, you're driving, and then somebody offered a trailer. Your dad. Sorry, I couldn't, I, I couldn't remember who it was that offered it. Uh, so we have a trailer offered, and Bruce is going to drive us that evening. So if you'd like to be part of that, uh, just holler at me, and we'll get that planned out. Uh, the Fruit Basket Ministry, uh, we are going to have recipients in both. You have the list are in both foyers. If you'd like to uh, put some on that list so they can be donated to. Uh, you may notice here at the front of the service, or at the church right here, we have many red and green colored boxes. Um, we had our packing party the other night, and our goal this year was 25. And I'm not real good at math, but we have, I believe, doubled and plus a few more extra of our boxes this year. Uh, so if you participated by either giving or packing boxes, I would love for you to stand up uh, so we can recognize you. All right. Thank you guys for participating, for giving. Uh, and as a challenge, if this is what we did with this me this year, what can we do next year? You know, that's a challenge. Miss Candace. We have 14 boxes that we have gotten donations to. People have given up their treasures. There's 14 people or whatever that have given their treasures to that we've given to so we have 14 boxes that need the shipping covered. So we have 14 that as of right now have not been covered. Okay. All right. So if you would like to, to help out with that so we can send those boxes, uh, please let me or Miss Candace know. 
All right. Uh, there will be a special board meeting next Sunday afternoon after the morning worship service to discuss the security team. If you're interested in being part of that, that um, board of stewards meeting, uh, just hang out after church. There's also, on December 12th, at 3 p.m. in the Old Fellowship Hall, there will be a bridal shower for Hannah Harrington. Uh, the ladies of the church are invited to attend that. Any other details you want to besides the time, the date, and participation? All right, and that is for Hannah Harrington. Is there any other announcements we need to discuss this morning? Miss Brandy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if you're interested in helping out the social committee for that, meet Miss Brandy after church. All right. Anyone else this morning? Brother Kyle. I just want to announce it today. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but we have been needing a young adult, college, career, getting married, having children, whatever. Just that young adult group for Sunday morning, um, Sunday school. And so we're going to launch it December 6th. The first Sunday, the 15th, excuse me, I don't have my phone on me, I don't know why I was looking at it. December 15th. Jane? January 15th. <laughs> you will be there, hopefully I will be there. My wife reminded me this morning, so uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to get together, we're going to uh, just, and I want you to know it is very, very informal. I do not want it to be uh, too formal where uh, you feel out of place. It's going to be a very casual setting. We're just going to talk about some things in God's Word. We're just going to discuss, hang out, talk, get to know each other. So please, if you are a young adult, I don't know, maybe uh, right out of high school up to about, we'll say, 35, <laughs> uh, please come, okay? Uh, we decided we're going to have it over in Russ's Cincinnati class. Eventually, I'll get down, down in Miss Cincinnati's old class. All right. Anything else this morning? All right. We will move to our praise reports and our prayer requests. Do we have anybody want to offer up a praise report this morning? Thankful to be in God's house. Absolutely. It's good to be here. Okay. Jana? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We are very thankful. Um, and Russ, my mind went to get the land master from Alabama to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, any prayer requests this morning? I got, I got something I want to, we've talked, Jack, but, or you've talked to Brother Kyle, but any prayer requests this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so we definitely need to pray for Roger Pate. His surgery went well. Uh, and he's just recovering. Miss Betty? Uh, Jeff, he has to have knee surgery because he has to have Yes, ma'am. So we'll be praying for him. All right. Anyone else this morning? Miss Lynn? Yes, ma'am. We'll be praying for Frankie. All right, I'm going to do something a little different this morning. Uh, Jack, if you'll come down here, uh, and as you're making your way, so a couple weeks ago, uh, before your surgery, before we find out you're having to have this surgery, uh, y'all y'all mentioned it for prayer requests and everything. And my heart, my spirit said, we we're supposed to get you down here and pray for you. And I was a little scared to do that because that's not something we kind of normally just jump on around here. And I was talking to Brother Kyle and Brent and Wade, and I said, I, was, I feel like I was supposed to do this, Jack. And I didn't because I was scared. But the good Lord saw you through that surgery without our prayers because he knows our hearts. 
So now that you're here, uh, I would ask, I'm going to ask the men of this church, if you will step forward and come down here and we're going to lay hands on Brother Jack and we're going to pray for continued healing, for his mercy and his grace, uh, to not just for you, for your family, for Jana, for uh, strength for you. I know this is hard for you. Uh, and women, it is not, it is not, a, it is not to exclude you, uh, but generally when the Bible says, ask the elders to come down and pray for you, it is, it is referring to the men of the church. Uh, so women, if you are there, if you will just, in your hearts as we pray, if you will just be with us in prayer uh, as we pray for Brother Jack. Dear Lord God, I thank you for grace. God, I thank you for mercy. Lord God, I thank you for uh, the ability to come back even as we maybe sometimes have, have failed before, Lord God. But God, I believe you spoke to pray for this man, Lord God. And God, I pray today for Jack Mayette, Lord God. I pray, God, that you will continue to be with him, to walk with him, to talk with him, and to lead him, Lord God. God, I pray for his physical body. God, I pray that you will continue to work and do things that will astound uh, the minds of doctors, Lord God. That they, will, they will not be able to deny that you are God and that you are doing what you said you would do, Lord God. Lord, I pray for him. I pray for his heart, Lord God. I pray for the good days and the bad days, Lord God. I pray that he will remain steadfast hopelessly devoted to you, Lord God. God, I pray for his family, Lord God, as they walk beside him and, and they're there for his good days and his bad days, Lord God. Lord, I pray for strength for the next step, God, for vision for where they're heading, Lord God, and hope for the future, Lord God. God, I pray for the day, and he's already done it so many times, that he will testify mm -hmm. to your goodness, Lord God, to your mercy, Lord God. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I tell y'all, that was about three days I've been coaching the Lord all my life. Those three days he, he carried. And he was healing. You know, he was there with me and took his feet. So I've been blessed. We will, uh, I'll pray again for our for the rest of our prayer requests and our service. Um, so, if you'll just, sorry, so if you'll just join with us. Dear Lord God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for the ability to be in your house, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that you are still active, God, that you are still moving, God, in the hearts of your people, Lord God. Lord, I pray uh, for, for faith over fear, Lord God, in moments where maybe you ask us to do something a little outside of our comfort zone, Lord God. God, I pray for the faith over fear moments, God. And Lord, I pray for our prayer requests this morning, uh, God, for Brother Roger and Jeff, Lord God, and Frankie, God, I pray you will continue to work in those situations, continue to be with Jack, Lord God, and his family. God, I pray for this church, God. I pray that you will uh, do something in this church, Lord God, that you will move in this church, God. God, I pray for today. I pray for Brother Kyle, God. I pray that his message, uh, God, it comes straight from the throne, God. Lord, I pray that we receive it uh, and we do something with it, Lord God. And Lord, I pray you teach us to pray as you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll now receive our tithes and offerings. Thank you, Lord, for letting us gather here this morning. We ask that you bless these tithes for your work and the work in this church. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
stand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. If you remain standing, this first song we're going to sing is There Is a Redeemer. It's going to be from a recording off the um, computer there, but if you'll just sing with us. song we're singing is Count Your Blessings, and we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth of that. It'll be 545 in the hymnal. 
and it'll be on the screens there. Man, ain't you glad for your wives? Oh, I didn't hear anything on that one. Let me say that one more time. Men, ain't you glad for your wives? Amen. Boy, you better start. Somebody's better speak up because somebody ain't going to be eating lunch after church today. I'm thankful for my wife. Uh, I'm thankful for my wife, but bless her heart, she just cannot seem to get me straight, can she? <laughs> Boy, she just can't do it. everything she does, and she just cannot seem to get this man straight. But I praise the Lord for him. If you'd all be willing to turn your Bibles to Matthew, we're going to be going through verses 25 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. This is one of those greatest passages in all of Scripture. Some of these words that Jesus says here, beautiful, divine, I would even say ineffable, inexpressible. You cannot, uh, you just, you cannot plumb the, the majesty of these words. There's just something special about them. The glory of Jesus shines through hardships, persecutions, opposition, conflict, rejection, being despised. Nobody likes them. A lot of people don't want them around. They won't listen to them. And Jesus praises Father in heaven, praises God in heaven. 
Our Lord is unlike any man or woman or child that has ever walked the face of this earth. Our Lord Jesus stood in the glory of the Father, and he did not stand down. Praise be to God for Jesus. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and you have revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is God's holy and inspired, inerrant, infallible, beautiful, life-changing word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your son. I just, I can never, I can never, never, never thank you enough for Jesus. We can never thank you enough for Jesus as a church. He is so lovely. He is so beautiful. And we don't mean the way the man thinks a woman is beautiful. He is divinely, splendidly, gloriously beautiful in his person, in his nature, in his moral character, in his personality. He is the loveliest of all lovelies. He is the most wonderful of all wonderfuls. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for sending to in, him, him into this world, a world that despised you, God, a world that every man did what was right in his own eyes and was pleased to do so. We thank you, God, for sending a bright shining star, the dawning of the morning star, a light into the world to light up the hearts of men. Thank you for the holy, precious, worthy Son of God who has come, though none of us saw you, who has come to reveal you to us. Thank you, God, for thy Son, thine only Son, the Son in whom you are well pleased. Father, this message is a message for all of us. Although I'm just a man and I always find it hard to describe the things that you've taught me, the things that you've shown me, the things that you want me to say to your people, so I pray that you would give me the ability to just make this simple. I pray that, this would make, that you would make this simple to your people's hearts, that they would be encouraged, they would be lifted up, that they would be reminded, God, that no matter what happens, that you are always in charge and you are moving forward and you are always good in everything that you do. God, I pray that this would ring loud and clear in your people's hearts. I pray that you, if there is any man or woman or even child in this room who is unconverted, who is still dead in their transgressions and sins, though they may want wear the, the dawn of Christianity or they may come to church and have religious affiliation. I pray that their heart, if their spirit, if their soul is still unconverted, I ask, dear God, that you would open their eyes 
for the glorious gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, today, and that you alone would convert their hearts, that you would bring them over the threshold from death to life, that you would regenerate them by your Holy Spirit and make them alive in Christ, that you'd wash their sins away and justify them from all things. God, you alone can do this. Therefore, I pray that you would do so today. Thank you so much for your word. I pray that you bless the reading and hearing and teaching and and listening and reception of your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. This week, as Americans, we are celebrating Thanksgiving as we do every year. We have very, we have much, many things to be thankful for today. As I've already said, I'll go ahead and say it again, that I'm personally, I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful that she has put up with so many shenanigans of mine over the years. Let me give you one example. Years back, in our first year or two of marriage, I, I don't know why, but I went on this kick. I wanted to buy some old G.I. Joe men, you know. I don't know why. It's dumb. But I wanted to buy old G.I. Joe men. You know what I'm talking about, brother. And so I looked on eBay, and I found some, and they looked good. They looked like the ones I wanted, so I ordered them. They came in the mail, and I found them, and I looked at them, and it turns out they was just cheap knockoff Chinese G.I. Joe men. They weren't the real thing. So I packed them away in a little drawer in my little study. Months later, Katie comes out and says, what is this? I said, uh, it's, I, I, it's G.I. Joe. But why did you buy it? I said, I don't know. I mean, it was, I messed up. She says, but this is dumb. Why do you want this stuff? I said, I don't, I'm like, just like a kid. I don't know. So I'm thankful that my wife has put up with some really dumb shenanigans of mine throughout the years and that she has not divorced me. Yet. <laughs> I'm also thankful for my children who have brought me joy in my later years that I never had in my past life. And so I am super grateful for all three of them, every one of them. I'm also thankful for this church. I have friends here. You guys are my friends. You guys challenge me to stand fast in the Lord and to keep going. You lift me up in prayer, just like we did, Brother Jack, a few moments ago. And you encourage me. I'm very grateful. But most of all, I am so thankful to God that He saved me. I, I, I just, I, I look back on my life, and I, there are times when I tremble. Because, the, I mean, I went swimming out in the Gulf of Mexico, half drunk and half, well, no, very drunk and very stoned. And it was at night in July. And I could have been eaten by a shark or drowned. And I know that if I would have died, I would have gone straight to hell. I'm telling you, I am thankful to God that he saved me personally because I was hell bound. Well, this morning, Jesus teaches us as Christians because he's thankful as well. Uh, Although he's thankful for reasons that we may not be thankful for. But he teaches us that as Christians, we should be thankful for two things. Number one, we should be thankful for God's sovereignty. And number two, we should be thankful for his rest. Well, following the lack of faith, as you remember from verses 7 through 24 that we looked at last week, following the lack of faith and repentance for, from those who he came to save, Jesus now here in verses 25 through 27 he breaks out into a hymn of thanksgiving. Not sung, but spoken. Now, for many of us, we would be heartbroken to be despised by those that we came, those that we love, those that we want to see God change their lives, to be spurned by those that we show concern for their spiritual welfare. Let me tell you something. That hurts. It hurts really bad when you try to do something kind for someone and they spurn your love. But Jesus here, if you notice, 
keeps his head cool through it all. And he says in verse 25, or excuse me, and we're told in verse 25, at that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and you have revealed them to little children. We've seen up to this point that a majority of the Jews refused to honor John the Baptist. You remember last week? What did you go out of the wilderness to see? A prophet? I'll tell you more than a prophet. This is the messenger. This is the forerunner. This is the one that God prophesied of. Well, they failed, and they refused to honor John as the, the Baptist. Not only this, but they also, the Jews, a majority of the Jews, persisted in their unbelief in Jesus as their Savior and their King. And yet, rather than lament, rather than grumble about all of this, our Lord rejoices that despite all appearances, all appearances, he was confident that God was still sovereignly working in the hearts of some people. And so he says in verse 26, because he goes one step further, he says, Yes, Father, for this was pleasing in your sight. The word pleasing comes from the Greek noun eudokia, means to bring someone pleasure. Jesus says, you were pleased to hide these things from some folks. You were pleased to reveal them to some others. I'm not going to sugarcoat this here. Of all the hardest passages in the entire Bible, this is one of those. The reason for this is because Jesus actually thanks his father for withholding revelation of his son from some people. And yet he reveals it to others. Now that is hard for many of us to lay grasp hold or grasp hold of because we want God to reveal himself to everyone. We want God to save everyone. But what, what, from what Jesus is saying here is that he does it. He withholds his grace from some people. Now, don't walk out on me yet. <laughs> Stay with me here. How do you interpret this scripture in light of all the passages that tells us that God is not willing that any should perish? That God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because there's one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. What do you do with those, those passages, passages like that? Well, some interpret, interpret Jesus' words in terms of God hiding himself from the proud and the self-righteous. In other words, those who choose to rise up to God by their own standards are turned away because they actually think that they could meet God's standards by their own human merit and their own human achievements. These are those that Paul says suppress the truth and therefore God gives them up to a debased mind. And therefore we have a passage here that kind of affirms this interpretation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Where Paul says, God sends them, listen, a strong delusion. God sends the delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now others interpret this passage, or what Jesus is saying here, from the angle of what's called divine election. And this comes from places like Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. You know, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. To make a choice before the world even was created. God chose, what Paul says here, that we should be holy and blameless before him. And Paul goes on to say, in love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. And let me add something there, not ours. But it also comes, this interpretation that some have, also comes from places like what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verses 29 through 30. 
He says, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those who he called, he also justified. And those he justified, declared right, those are the ones he also glorified. Now, to add confusion to all of this, because you're just looking at me with blank stares, and you're like, man, where's he going with this? Or put, trust me, I'm going somewhere. To add confusion to all of this, look down at your Bibles at Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. And Jesus says, all things have been handed down over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Son except the, or excuse me, no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Now, if no one can know the Father unless the Son chooses to reveal Him, and if no one can come to Jesus unless the Father draws Him, as John 6, says, then there must be something. I'm not going to say which way or the other. I'm just going to say there has to be something to this thing called predestination because it's all over the Bible. You cannot look far before you see it. Now, here it is. Whether you believe that God looks ahead in time and sees who will believe and bases or chooses to save someone on that basis, or if you believe that God sovereignly chooses to save some by his own discretion, regardless of whether he foresees their faith or not, I'm going to leave that up to you. Leave it up to you at this point. But Jesus clearly knows, and he clearly thanks the Father for exercising his mysterious divine sovereignty in matters of salvation. And our Lord works in tandem with that sovereign plan. Why? Because he himself is God. And Jesus knows the mind of the Father. Jesus was with God the Father before creation. That's why it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made by him, of things in heaven and things on earth. And there's nothing that has not been made that was not made by this Word who is with God, who is in the bosom of the Father. Therefore, Jesus works within the parameters of that sovereign, divine plan that is above and beyond our human comprehension. That's what I want to say there about that. And though many have rejected Christ this point, our Lord was thankful, listen, that his mission was not a failure. It was successful. And he continued his gospel ministry unhindered, undaunted, unshaken because the Father was actively leading some people to find forgiveness and life in Christ. So you know what I'm thankful for this morning? Let me tell you what I'm thankful for. I am so thankful that I'm here. I don't know how I got here. Not, not, not here in this pulpit, but just here as a saved believer in Christ. I am thankful that because this was true then, and it's still true today. I'm thankful that regardless, listen, that regardless of whatever role that God plays in the redemptive process of saving lost souls, I am thankful that he does. God is the one who makes things happen, and I praise him for it. So if you're saved today, if you have the Spirit of God living in you, if, you have, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if you have peace with God today by faith in Christ Jesus, then thank God for his sovereignty because he saw you where you were. He turned you from your path of destruction and led you to his son, Jesus Christ, to find forgiveness, to find life, to find salvation. Praise God that he did not let you continue on in that path. Amen? 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 Thank God 
that out of the depths of His grace, He reached out, He saved you, and He made you His own. Here's something else I'm thankful for just reading this passage. I'm thankful that every ministry that we do as Christians, both individually as well as corporately as a church, that God is ultimately in charge of the results. Remember what Paul said? Paul sows, Paul waters, God gives the increase. God is the one who makes things grow. God is the one that makes things happen. Now, the participation is not up to God. He's not going to make you get involved with the ministry. He's not going to make you show up for something that the church wants to do for the glory of Christ. The participation is on your behalf. That's on you. If you don't show up, that is completely on you. But if you show up, and whatever you do for the glory of God, God will produce the results, and God will get the glory. And I think this is extremely liberating because at the end of the day, it is God who is the one who sets up the appointments. He's the one who makes things happen in ways that you never would have even thought. You never would have conceived. You thought everything was going down the drain. <laughs> Jesus could have thought the same thing, but he knew that God was in it, knew that his Father was working. So like Jesus, here's the thing I want to tell you. It is not to know exactly what God will produce. Ours is simply to trust and obey just like our Lord Jesus Christ. And let God do his thing and let him get the glory. Be thankful that God is sovereign. All right, now knowing this, Jesus, interestingly enough, Jesus confidently issues an open invitation for all who wish to be saved and to come to him and find rest. This is where, in case you're wondering, does the pastor believe in free will? Yes, I do. <laughs> this is where free will comes into play in, uh, the, in this matter. This invitation is not for some uh, elite squ uh, squad of pre-elected recipients. This invitation is for any and for all. It's for anyone who wants it, with no exception. If you want to be saved, Jesus is saying, you can be saved. Look at verse 28. He says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus knows, our Lord knows, the burdens of his people, Israel. How they have struggled to find peace with God throughout their entire existence as a nation. They have been afflicted with war. They've been afflicted with false prophets and corrupt kings. They've been afflicted with invasions of their own homeland as well as dishonest priests, and they've even been afflicted with their own transgressions and sins and God's just retribution. And now, in this period of their history, they have been under the tyrannical rule of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who have burdened them with rules and regulations for worship and civil obedience that far exceeded God's good commands for his people. They wanted to find peace, but any time that they look, look to the leaders, any time that they listened to their leaders, all they found was God portrayed as a harsh deity who demanded sacrifices and outward conformity to law. And listen, brothers and sisters in Christ, it's into this arena, into this mindset that our Lord Jesus speaks to his people with gentle words of comfort. He says, come to me. Come, just come. Come to me. And I will give you rest. He says, if you come to me, I will refresh your souls. I will give you what you've been longing for. I will give you satisfaction. I will fulfill your every need. Not your lust, not your want, but I will fulfill your every 
deepest spiritual, soulish heart longing need. In this instance, Psalm 23 speaks louder than words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus, as the shepherd of Israel, summons them to leave behind their fears. He summons them to leave behind their burdens, to leave behind their troubles and to find relief in him. You see, for millennia, God's people had strived to keep the law of God to no avail. And this is impossible because sinful people cannot stop sinning. And no amount of religious fervor can ever cover the multitude of sins that we must be uh, have answered for before a holy and infinite God at the end of time. There's got to be someone, someone, who would guarantee their eternal safety by living up to the standard and the requirements of the law and satisfy its demands. And you all know who that is. That man is Jesus Christ in whom there is no sin and never did any sin, and there was no sin found in him. The reason that God's people find relief in Christ, both then as well as today for us, is because he doesn't require external religious activity. That's the problem with many people. When they come to church, they think if they just do church stuff, they act religious. They give money to the poor and do kind things. That that is going to be good enough. Jesus does not want that. God does not want that. God wants our faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. He wants us to come to him to find that a relationship with God is not hard. (laughs) It's not hard. It's not burdensome. That's what religious people find. They're just trying to keep up with doing good enough stuff that God will be pleased with them and happy with them. And it never happens. They're still plagued. But Jesus is saying, come to me and I'll give you rest. You can cease from your labors. I'll make it easy for you to have a relationship with my father. Why? Because it has been purchased by his own righteousness. You know, the Bible tells us that there's therefore now no condemnation to those of us who are in Christ Jesus. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath set us free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by flesh could not do. It says, by sending his own son in the likeness of, uh, of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but in accordance with the Holy Spirit. In other words, everything that ever needed to be done to gain a harmonic relationship with God has been done. My beloved, the cross provided the payment for sin. The resurrection provided the hope of eternal life. And the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ provided the Holy Spirit of God to live inside of us to make us acceptable with God. Are you hearing me, church? It's all been done. It's finished, as he said. This is good news for us today. It's such good news for us. We should be thankful for Christ's rest. Let me make this more practical for you here. Make it a little more close to home. Subconsciously, we've all longed to be free from the burden of our sins. So for some of us, you, we've struggled to be good enough, like I've already said. But we found that we can't. Nothing that we do can ever clear our conscience. We continue to carry around, listen, a burden of guilt and remorse. For others, and I'm including myself in this category, we knew we wasn't good enough. (laughs) I know I wasn't good enough. We knew that when we died that we would face God in eternity and that we would be held accountable for the way that we lived in this world. And we carried with us 
in our own way, the burdens of fears, terror, yes, anxiety, remorse, regret, self-loathing, hatred of ourselves, and hatred of the world. But praise be to God, my friends, that Christ stands ready to receive any and all who will come to him to find relief. My friends, because of what he did 2,000 years ago, we can be free. Free to enjoy a relationship with God. A relationship of love and fellowship. We can be free to have fellowship within our community of believers, to find true friends here. We can be free to die without fear <laughs> and free to live righteousness as His Spirit leads us all along the way. Christ says, come to me and I will give you rest. And part of that rest is that He sets you free. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Ask yourself this morning, listen to me people, are you free right now? I'm talking to you. Are you free? Not trying to be a jerk here, but I am talking to you. Are you free? If you are not, let me tell you something. Jesus is still available for you. Still available to make you free if you want. To give you life. To give you joy. To give you pleasure and satisfaction. To give you peace. When you know you don't have no peace. When you know something's wrong. That there's a disconnect between you and God. Jesus has come to me. Come to me. I, I will make things right with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My friends, this Thanksgiving, to be sure, all of you will sit at a table. And you will eat a hearty meal. Amen? I know some of y'all are going to be eating some ham. Many of y'all are going to be eating some turkey. You'll be eating some mashed potatoes and gravy. Maybe somebody's special home-cooked green bean casserole. Maybe if you're lucky enough, you can show up at Mrs. Jenna's house and have her special recipe of some, some venison. Am I right about that, Mrs. Jenna? She nodded. That means it's there. You go get it. Many of us are going to eat a good, hearty meal this Thanksgiving. Some of us more than we should. Some of y'all are going to feast on cream cheese pie and cream cheese cake. I will not. I will be bringing my own Oreos this year. But this year, here's what you can do. In the time that you sit down to gather with your family, testify to the glory of God in Christ Jesus. Take a moment and speak of his glory with your mouth. Let your lips praise the Lord. Speak of all that he has done for you. Give thanks to him that he graciously saved you, if that's true about you. Give thanks to God that he has graciously called you to himself. And let me say one more thing. For to those of you who this may apply, Thank God that despite beleaguering appearances, that God is still working in and around your life. When it seems like things are out of control, I'm in with this, so don't think I'm going to go on for 15 more minutes. I promise I'm not. But if you feel overwhelmed and like nothing's going the way that you planned, think of Jesus. Verses 7 through 24, and think of verse 25. God is still actively working. Therefore, do not give up. Don't give up. Jesus didn't. Therefore, neither should you. Let's give thanks now. Father in heaven, I'm all the day that you have permitted me to stand before your people, though I yelled a lot. <laughs> Father,
Thank you, God, for another opportunity to be able to proclaim your word to your people. I could never be good enough as I could never be good as Peter, Simon Peter. But thank you, God, for the words that your son Jesus told him. Feed my sheep. God, your people have received your word today. They have been fed with the holy word of God. I pray that your word has not fallen on deaf ears. I pray that if there's anyone here, I'm going to pray again, anyone here who has a disconnect with you, who is broken, who may be unconverted, don't know, they, they're not saved, anyone whose heart is broken and, and they feel like just giving up. Father, I pray for anyone who is just searching, needing answers, and they're just wondering, why have you not answered me yet? Where are you? Why are you so silent? God, I pray that you would speak tenderly, gently, words of comfort to them through your Holy Spirit, even now, through this message that has been prepared for them. And Lord, I thank you so much for uh, this church. I pray that you would stir us up to love and good works. Pray this Thanksgiving that we would testify to your glory. I speak not to the church only. That is, the people out in the pews. I speak to Kyle Ashley Kitchens. Lord God, that I myself would testify to your glory this week. Thank you, God, that you are sovereign. And thank you that you give us rest when we feel burdened and weary. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.